so this is an alternative uh, to an experiment that normally one can actually do in a fume cupboard. Um, this is actually something that I've personally tried to think about over uh, the course of several years uh, to try and conduct an experiment that allows me to demonstrate that non-metal oxides are acidic. And the non-metal that I have, uh, which is very, very freely available as well, is, um, is sulfur. The problem with sulfur is that the gas is toxic and you can also have some real issues and real problems with asthmatic students as well who are very sensitive to the sulfur dioxide. So what I need to try and do is do it on a very, very small scale, you know, something that can be handled within a well-ventilated area. And what I need to do is I need to, first of all, produce the sulfur dioxide and then test it with some universal indicator solution. So uh, the way that I've actually considered doing this, and I've tried it out a few times, so uh, it, with, with reasonable success, is that I take a small amount, and it really does have to be a small amount, but you do have to, uh, you do have to judge uh, how, how much to heat it for. But I would say maybe, that much in a spatula, a very, very small amount. I mean, we're talking, talking less than maybe a tenth of a gram. So just pop it at the, pop it at the bottom of the test tube. Really, really tiny amounts is what's key. So what we're going to now do is we're going to now use a, a material called rock silk, which is mineral wool. And uh, what you need to do is you just need to form a plug. So I'm going to try and uh, show you how it is. I prefer to use gloves when I'm doing this uh, because you just don't quite know where the fibres are going. You just need to take uh, enough to form a plug. And I often find, when I'm actually doing a procedure like this, uh, I often find that the use of a glass rod is uh, useful. But because we're trying to plug uh, the middle, it's really essential that you actually make sure that you uh, that you kind of seal the end as well. Uh, you don't want any of the any of the fumes to um, uh, to leave. So that's actually quite a good plug. And remember, what we're actually trying to do is we're actually trying to make a gas in this test tube, but we want to try and keep the gas as much as possible in, within the test tube itself. I'm just going to just to say just to be cautious. I'm just going to put uh, an additional plug right at the end, just to uh, keep it down. Okay, uh, next stage is to heat this gently. So, away we go. Okay, so here we are, we've got our uh, test tube with our very, very small sample of uh, sulfur and what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a, a gentle uh, flame of the Bunsen and what we're going to do is we're going to dash it in just to just to uh, heat it up quite gently. Now you, have, you do have to judge this. Um, initially what happens is you get a slight crispiness uh, at the end and what I'll do is I'll just hopefully show that because uh, it's shown very very nicely on uh, the camera so we'll actually get this uh, orange uh, orange effect so that's just uh, the sulfur uh, softening up and also uh, forming an alternative allotrope it gives you an opportunity to talk about uh, different allotropes that sulfur has so it's very very gentle and you also should notice that there is a, a layer of uh, cloud on the on the sulfur itself so I'm just going to highlight this here it's actually a layer of cloud now it could be a mixture of the vapor or it uh, it could be just a little bit of moisture just locked inside there but uh, it's often uh, a good opportunity to talk about density you also find that the sulfur does in fact uh, uh, condense on the on the top part as well but what we want to try and do is we want to try and um, I'm going to try and react it with any of the oxygen that's in there. So, like, just hold it on the edge. Let's be very, very gentle. Okay. So 
it should be okay because there shouldn't be any kind of build up of pressure you've got your uh, mineral but at the same time what you're doing is you are just heating it a little bit just to cause some sulfur dioxide to uh, to form that final uh, heat and then what we're going to do is we're going to let it settle so here we have the uh, the, the, the product and it's stuck in this chamber and like I said, you know if you do have a fume covered it's absolutely fine just conduct it in a fume covered uh, you've got no worries whatsoever but if you don't have a fume covered uh, you've got to try and uh, do this in a, in a kind of micro scale way so what I'm now going to do is something quite interesting because what I want to do is I want to actually uh, get some universal indicator in there and the problem is that if you apply your universal indicator uh, inevitably what you'll need to do is you'll need to remove the micro uh, mineral board. But what I actually have here is I have a hypodermic needle. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have one in your department, that's brilliant. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take some of this uh, universal indicator and I'm going to draw it up through the syringe. And uh, I always wanted to do this actually. I always wanted to make sure that uh, the end of the needle is full of liquid. Okay, so that's fine. And now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to insert this through the side. Okay, so just using a hypodermic needle, go all the way in, and then just start to insert your uh, liquid. And hopefully you can see this. You can actually see that the water fully absorbs the gas, and the gas is acidic. And there you have it. Fantastic. Okay, and that's it. That's how you display and demonstrate the acidic nature of uh, sulfur dioxide as an acidic oxide. You can then compare the colour of that against the original, uh, the original colour of your universal indicator. I've got one I prepared earlier, and that should give students enough uh, evidence to uh, appreciate that this is indeed an acidic gas that has been formed from a non-metal oxide. Thank you for watching.